Can you fix see my screen now? Okay, so all right. So let us let us see uh, how this this came. So so what was the uh, the transition functions here? The arguments, right? So what was it? So this part. So, so is it is it clear this this part what um, I'm saying here? Uh, I think this this part and this is it clear to everybody? I mean, if it's not clear, I'll explain. That's why I'm just asking. So speak up. If it is not clear. Yeah, in in a, in any case, so I don't know what you are thinking. I don't know you have done or not, but let us let us see this part. So, so this P one intersection P two. Let us go here. So, so I'll put uh, my lecture here itself, and then share it to you. So here, this is uh, today's date is eleventh, right here. So we have. Uh, P one, so in, in case of previous one, so let me let me just write u one and u two. So this is what is this? This is competition of of transition. Oh, this is fine. Functions. Okay, so this is the competition of uh, transition functions. So, in case of case of first atlas, uh, all it has out. <laughs> atlas. In S one. So in this case, U one was. Let's go back and see. So U one was this e to the power i t, where t lies between zero to two pi. E to the power i t, zero less than t less than two pi. And U two was e to the power i t such that uh, minus pi less than t less than two less than pi all right now what we need to look at and phi one is P1 and P2 are both these things. So P1 of J is arc J. And P2 of J is also arc J.
all right and we now look into we, we want to look into intersection so u1 intersection u2 so what is it is it connected first of all yeah U1 intersection U2, is it connected? No, sir. Right. So how many components it has? Two components. Right. It has two components. Uh, so as I as I drew previously, so you had this. Right. So did I do it? right one was just this one and other one i did not draw but let me draw it now so this one green one uh, green one was an, uh, one and the other one will be red so in green one this point is missing This point is missing, and in red one, uh, this point is missing. This point is missing. So here it is minus one, and this one. So it has two component. One is on top, and one is on the bottom. Bottom, right? So u one intersection u two is. Let's try. Let me write it properly u1 intersection u2 is nothing but the variety where minus pi less than t less than zero union to the variety zero less than minus pi to zero and so this one minus pi to pi of course and then zero less than t less than pi right yeah is this fine so where does this u1 and pi to 2 pi goes can you repeat so where does this pi to 2 pi goes right so here I wrote minus pi less than t less than zero and zero less than t less than pi, right? So is this fine or do I need to change? So this minus pi less than t less than zero. So we, what does it mean? So which which part of is this? Which part of the circle is this? That you can see circle drawing in the lower part. part. Right, the lower part. And this is this gives you the upper part. Right. Right. And this lower part is also can be seen as pi to two pi. Right? The same as pi to two pi as well. So see the di distinction. So here on this chart U1. 
T moves here, this this part, T T moves not from minus pi to zero, to zero. it moves from pi to two pi. Do you understand? So is it clear here? Here this I wrote in terms of the 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 what is written here in case of u2 all right but you can write it same way in case of i mean what else is written u1 so which means which is e to the power i t zero less than t less than pi union e to the power i t zero less than t sorry pi less than t less than 2 pi this is also perfectly fine all right yeah okay so and this too makes some certain distinction now what we need to look at we have uh, some u1 here let me draw this picture so this this was some this was u1 this one u2 so intersection is in our case larger so here from u you have phi one and here phi two and it goes to of course real line two intervals right two intervals here also it goes to interval what are the intervals it goes here the intersection so look at just the intersection and what is the interval here yeah let me go back to previous here so what is the interval Sir, this is not well defined then, right? Like, what is not well defined? Like the interval can be either zero to pi, pi to two pi no, union, or depends, it could be. It depends on u one and u two, right? That's my point. When you are on u one, you have this phi one j is r j, right? So phi one here phi one z is r z but r z now moves here from so zero less than r z less than two pi right it, it moves from u one so sorry yeah it, it goes from u one right so it is only well, perfectly well defined right it, it's for phi one when you are looking at phi one you need to look at the second part right okay sir got it and when you look at u2 you need to look at the first part yeah intersection yeah, of course when you look at u2 or you need to look at phi2 as as the argument so argument is defined in two different way that was my point so you can remove any line and you can define argument which will be continuous one on one to everything but you need to remove one line from complex plane from passing through zero all right so this argument this looks the function looks same but these two are different function the domains are different is it clear to everybody so maybe let me point it out here The domains of phi one and phi two are different. So they are different functions. Though in writing we are we are writing it as, as the same looking function, but but 
it, 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 it got different images. Its domain is different. All right? Is it clear now? OK, let's come here. So what is the interval, the first case? Yeah, what is this point? 0 to pi and pi to, to pi. Right, 0 to pi. And here it is, pi to 2 pi. So one point is missing, pi. Pi is not there. And of course, 0 and 2 pi are both are not there. And in this case, it is minus pi to 0 and 0 to pi. 0 and 0 to pi. So these are open, open intervals. Yeah, these are open intervals. are open intervals yeah now let us look at what will be the transition function here so suppose you go this way so what is it what is the function so you you go via phi inverse and then phi 2 so phi 2 compose phi 1 inverse right so what is it So phi two compose phi one inverse z. What is it? That is identity on zero to pi. Right, 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 right. So it has two component. So this is this is z, or maybe I should put t instead of z. So because now it is not from where to where. It's from this interval, right? This union to of two intervals to union of two intervals. So it's let's put t t. So here in this case t from t on where zero to pi. So why is that so? Sir, because it maps to the top part of the circle. Let us go back again to this circle. So you first we, we we have this zero to pi, right? So zero to pi goes here. All right. And on the top part of the circle, it also goes to uh, goes to zero to pi in case of uh, zero to two pi as well. So yeah, maybe I should. I should have written or uh, drawn the circle instead of this. Let me draw the circle. Yeah. What happened? It becomes the disk. <laughs> no, this I don't want. Anyway, that's fine. So we have this first interval. Let's color it. So let's call it red here. It's the first interval, 0 to 2 pi. Under the argument map, inverse of the argument map, it goes to, so it goes to the interval here. Right here. Now this one in phi 2, it also goes to, so p2 has this minus pi to 0 here and 0 to pi. So here also it goes to here, this part. So you're right. 
this is t on on 0 to, to 0 to pi all right and what happens here from pi to 2 pi t minus 2 pi right so this is this is here it goes to here right so let me draw a different color in a different color so here this part goes here so this two point two endpoints here my one and minus one is missing and here it goes to zero to two pi minus pi to zero so now this gives you an affine map which is nothing but this t minus 2 pi on pi to 2 pi. Yeah, this is fine. So did you get it, Arshit? Yes. This one? OK. Yeah, so this map, this is an affine map. It's not linear. All right. So similarly, now you'll be able to calculate here, which will also be, I think you can guess, right? So on this, it will be t plus 2 pi, or on this, it will be identity. So here, here it will be, if you go this way, here it will be just identity, here t, t plus 2 pi, and here it will be just identity. Yeah, this is fine. Does this make sense? Everything? All right. So now, if you have not done this computation uh, with these four charts, um, you must do it as a homework exercise. Oh, by the way, there will be a quiz on next Monday. So it will be 15 minutes quiz, only one question with a definition, coupled with a definition. All right, so what we are discussing? We are discussing uh, charts, right? So uh, what, what did they give examples of? Uh, we gave example of Atlas. Right, yeah. So these are a couple of atlases on, on on circle. We'll come with more examples, but let me define a few more concepts. So so a definition is differentiable structure. So did I did I define differentiable structure? I didn't define right? No, sir. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah, so so yeah, before that, let me of course, I, I have to define this differentiable structure, but one need a notion of maximality. So maximal atlas. So 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 an atlas. You know an atlas, right? So an atlas is called uh, maximal if it is not contained in any larger atlas. All right. 
So maximal in the sense that was, uh, I mean, an atlas was a collection of pairs u alpha, u alpha, phi alpha, where u alpha is, u alpha comma phi alpha is the chart. And there is this infinity compatibility. So now that atlas, I mean, you can add one more chart which is compatible with respect to all the all the all the charts of the atlas, right? So then it would be it can be a bigger one. Okay, so I need more definitions. So this is this is just maximum atlas. But uh, before going into further, let me uh, define something called yeah. So we are discussing some equivalence relation. Sorry made that point so compatibility was it an equi is it an equivalence relation see infinity compatibility yeah we'll use maximal atlas a little later but first question is is C infinity compatibility among all uh, all charts and equivalence relation yeah so last time i think rachel uh, uh, pointed out that reflexibility is easy right so it is reflexive yeah is it fine so phi inverse phi inverse phi is just identity, right? So it is always compatible to itself. Symmetric. So which means u alpha u one phi one is compatibility. This this relation is infinity compatibility here. U two phi two implies u2 phi2 u1 phi1 right so here you see what i missed last time if i did not give that i, I said once i write phi1 inverse compose phi2 phi2 compose phi1 inverse is differentiable not the other way so then it would not be symmetric so i incorporated that so here is phi two inverse compose phi one or sorry phi two compose phi one inverse is c infinity comes in in the intersection wherever defined and here phi one compose phi two inverse right is c infinity that gives so this this is okay because this 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 means that this is infinity and and phi one compose phi two inverse is infinity. So this two part was provided. So in this case also, this phi two compose phi one inverse is C infinity. So this this two are there from the first one only. So it is symmetry. So what is what about transitive? So, anybody thinks, anybody think that uh, transitive is a problem? Sir, we will have, uh, say, uh, U, V, and W. Then yeah, yeah. we have a map between U, I mean, we have U intersection V in one case, and mm -hmm. on the other case, we have V intersection W. Right. So, uh, that is a problem. Because uh, like if, if both the intersections were equal, we'll get a, a smooth map, C infinity smooth map. 
and on top of that if uh, we had u intersection w to be equal to this intersection then we'll get sad situation but I, i am not sure if that is always the case uh, well that will not always be the case but let us draw the picture it will be very clear so let's draw the let us this is u u u and let's say this is v and there is this one is w right so so this is called all this p the map here it is psi and here it is sigma right so this three chart maps goes to some open subset of rn now you know this u comma phi is is compatible with is infinitely compatible with p comma psi right so it means that you to look at any inverse of it so p inverse compose psi so this maps from phi u intersection v sorry u intersection v not u1 u intersection v to psi u intersection v right and phi compose psi inverse that is from psi u intersection v to phi u intersection v sar c infinity smooth right by the way you see this maps are actually not just c infinity is smooth it is also invertible hence it is inverse to each other right so you get a diffeomorphism from some open subset of r r n to open subset of r n yeah so this this maps are actually diffeomorphism now this is given this is the first one so this and suppose uh v psi is compatible with w sigma that means is the following sigma compose psi inverse from psi of p intersection w to sigma of p intersection w and psi compose sigma inverse from sigma of p intersection w to sigma uh, to psi of v intersection w are c infinity maps now so to to show the relation is transitive we need to show u phi is related to w sigma which means that is that is sigma compose phi inverse from p of u intersection w to sigma of u intersection w and phi compose sigma inverse of sigma inverse from sigma of u intersection w to sigma of u uh, sorry phi of u intersection w is c infinity right now let's look at the picture right so let's look at the picture again look at the intersection so u intersection v is this one right v intersection w is this one but 
u intersection w is this one right so on this part you see on this part on the red part where no other color is there that part we don't know the function right we don't know anything we don't we don't know whether this is smooth or not so this this whole thing may not be smooth so what one would uh, would like to do is the as following uh, help me add few more So, so what one can do is as follows, right? So you we want uh, let let's look at again what we what we want. We want this one. Let's say so sigma compose phi inverse. So sigma compose phi. Sorry. Uh, yeah. So sigma compose phi inverse what one can do is as and as an algebra not any analysis or anything you can do sigma compose uh psi inverse compose psi compose sigma inverse oh sorry phi inverse phi inverse right this part is c infinity this part is also c infinity so composition of c infinity so what is the problem so what is the problem? So this to a C infinity map, right? C infinity. This is also C infinity. So the composition is also C infinity. So what is the problem? It's defined so, only in that small part. Right. <laughs> so this is defined, this composition. So yeah, so this composition, this you can define, you can define this this only on the image or rather i let me give precise only on v of u intersection v intersection w only on the small part so we don't know in other part as uh yeah so in this part we don't know what happens all right so this part is is the is the problem problematic part so in general so therefore Uh, the relation, the compatibility relation is not transitive in general. All right. Now we need to recover from this one. So, what we want to do is is you fix an atlas first okay so how to recover these things so how to fix this fix it so first fix an atlas atlas script you all right so which is u alpha so which is let's say u alpha phi alpha alpha is from index set all right you fix an atlas which actually why do we need it because it's union of u alpha covers whole of manifold and so there is an underlying manifold all the time 
All right. So you fix in first fix in atlas. Then what you want to take is as, as the following. Uh, sorry. So you take two charts, u comma phi is compatible to v comma psi if so so the point is you uh, so you consider so so not all charts we will consider we will consider uh, the following consider the charts u comma phi which are compatible with every member sir we can't the... see the presentation oh is it Sorry. yes okay let me share it again uh, you could... Yeah. Can you see it now? Yes, sir. OK, so first we fix an atlas, right? So this part uh, you have seen, I think. Uh, now consider the charts which are compatible to every member of this atlas. All right? So everyone. We, we will not look at other charts which are not compatible with any of them any any of the members of you then if it is so suppose you you put a you have a basket here and you, you have some some charts on that basket which actually for which which actually we is an atlas all right but there might be some other charts as well so if we pick a chart and look at any of the chart from the basket and see whether it is compatible with that so if it is if it is not compatible with some of them then you throw it out and if it is compatible with all of the charts from 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 the basket then you keep on the basket or keep on a little separate basket uh, yeah but it's actually the point is you can keep my point is you can keep in the basket as well so what is the point? So, so if u comma phi is infinity compatible with with atlas, so which which means that every member of the atlas with the atlas u. Uh, so let let me write another one. So v comma psi also. So both of these two charts are C infinity compatible. Then u phi is compatible with v psi. Right. So now uh, see here is u, here is v right and this is phi and this is psi all right going into rn so but the charts from u alpha covers whole of a so so this intersection will be covered by some u alpha right so some u alpha here 
you also let's say so at, at any other point you look look you will be another one some u beta u beta and this algebra now is true so psi compose phi inverse fix at a point then this will be let's say this is this is a point x around x around x phi psi compose phi inverse can be written as psi compose phi alpha inverse compose phi alpha compose phi inverse does it make sense around x so which means here in this intersection yeah in this intersection so now now this makes sense so this is c infinity and it makes sense it doesn't it is not doesn't hold in the whole intersection u intersection b but it holds locally but if you fix you take any other point you will get another one so in this case if x is here you get u, u beta u beta phi beta so instead of phi alpha you put phi beta there which will be c infinity again yeah so that means this map so since uh, is c infinity since because since x is an arbitrary point point of u intersection b well, around let's say around phi x i should put is it clear i need one more explanation one more time okay so now we 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 had this problem when we look at just two charts and the compatibility it would not become an equivalence relation but if you consider a fixed atlas and now try to add the chart so so what i was pointing out you look at a basket and you put an atlas there so you have some charts and pick another chart and try to see whether this is compatible with the, with the everybody in the basket so you pick on one from the basket and see whether this is compatible if it is compatible with everyone you put in the basket that's what it is doing and when you took take take the next one next one from a, a next other chart and you want to look at compatibility you don't need to look at the everybody in the basket you need to look at only that the atlas, atlas you begin with you begin with all right and if it is compatible with respect to that atlas you put in the basket and so you, you keep on putting all right now you see the maximality makes sense right so i should have put the definition later on but i i i have put it earlier so here so maximal atlas an atlas is called maximal if it is not containing any any larger atlas so you have taken the basket an atlas in the basket you cannot put any more chart over here if you can put any more chart which are different from whatever is there in the basket it will be a bigger atlas so the point is you cannot put any more in the basket so that the atlas in the basket will be called maximal yeah okay. sir a question yes sir would uh, i mean given an atlas would a maximal atlas always exist yeah yeah so Why? it is it, it does exist and it is proof is very simple right you can guess so so what would be the proof you look at all the charts no. You fix the atlas and look at all the charts which are compatible to that atlas, right? Yeah. You have already taken whole collection which are compatible, so you don't have any more. Now this again forms an atlas. 
which and this is maximal as well yeah so this Sir, is when we're talking about maximal I'll, address we are taking from a set of charts right oh no 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 we are yeah we are taking at an atlas first yeah maximal atlas is also uh, a collection of charts right a collection of charts so chart is basically i mean if you fix a point on a, on a manifold m you look at a small neighborhood and a map it will be a chart right you look at a bigger neighborhood you give another map it will again be a chart right this can happen so there are a lot of such neighborhoods so maximal means you have a collection of uh, charts and if you you can take any other charts that will not be compatible with everybody of them yeah does it make sense sarshit yes sir okay so this is this is called uh, maximal and the point is that given an atlas you will always have a maximal atlas right the proof is actually that one but for maximality you need to uh, give an argument so theorem no so maybe i should put it as proposition given an atlas you there always exist a maximal atlas right the proof how do you prove the construction is so so you let's call it u alpha phi alpha as we usually call alpha belongs to some index set lambda so define m as collection of all charts u comma phi which is is compatible to you so which means any member of the atlas script you yeah now m is also an atlas right so is this clear m is also an atlas yes sir since they are compatible with each other so right so this is also an atlas all right so this is this is uh, m is also an atlas now we need to show to so m is maximal right oh so sorry i missed one statement maximal is fine maximal is fine because maximal is easy so i missed one one word in the statement can you guess what it is there always exists unique yes a unique maximal atlas yeah so uniqueness part is actually uh, in, you need to give a proof so this is this is collection of all charts which is compatible so you take any other chart it is not compatible 
But if it is compatible, it is already already in M. So this is maximal. M is also an atlas. M is M is also maximal because any chart compatible with M is also compatible with U hence Hence, yeah, and hence lies in M. So any chart which is compatible with M lies in M because it is compatible with U also because U is a subset of M. And hence it is then it, it must lie in M because that is how M is defined. All right. Sir, I think I'm having confusion in the first point. How do we say that M is also an atlas? So what is the definition of atlas? What are the conditions? Sir, any two given um, should be compatible. Yes. Yes. So compatible and it should cover M. U alpha should cover M. So chart should cover M because you you script U is already an atlas. All right. So C infinity compatibility, and that comes from here, right? Here. That comes from here. Right? Oh yes, sir. Yes. Okay. So this one you check. So this one, I, 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 I told the argument. So I've not written the argument explicitly here. Around every x, so x was arbitrarily chosen. So you can have some u alpha, uh, which will, on the intersection x, will lie. And there, you, you use phi alpha here in this case here. All right? So write it, write this argument properly, then you will be, I mean, it will be, it will be crystal clear. All right, so M is an atlas, and it is also a maximal because uh, any compatible chart with M is also compatible with U, and hence it is lies in U, U lies in U by definition. All right, now uniqueness. Uniqueness. So suppose there exists another maximal atlas. Right? Can you see it? Can you see my screen? Yes, sir. OK, so my uh, this another device actually got disconnected. So I thought maybe, I don't know. I asked the first time, nobody answered. OK. All right. So suppose there exists another maximal atlas m prime m prime then what happens so script u lies in m intersection m prime right right yeah 
So let u phi lies in M, which means u phi is compatible, C infinity compatible with u, right? So u phi is infinitely compatible with u, and, and u lies in m prime also. So can you conclude, conclude, conclude that uh, that u phi is also uh, well? Let's first look at this. Is this is easier this part? Let's see if I let u phi belongs to m prime. So this is. Uh, this is seen pretty compatible with you because you lies in M prime also. Yeah. Is this fine? So this means U phi lies in M. This is by construction of M. Yeah, is it clear? Sir, can we directly say that the collection new should mm -hmm. lie inside uh, m prime because it's yeah. extension m prime and then um be like m is a maximal uh, thing made from mu so directly m prime is a subset of m no i said m prime is also another maximal atlas oh you mean but m was constructed as something that is compatible with all of mu right Right, right. That that gives yeah. So so uh, say that again. So you uh, yeah. I was also saying that this is M prime is subset of M, but you you want to jump one step. So so the collection mu. Yeah. Uh, is a subset of M prime. Yes. And That's M why... is a collection yeah. of all charts that are compatible with everything in mu, and M yeah. prime, each chart in M prime is a, a chart that is compatible with everything in mu mu yeah and uh, hence it's a subset yeah that's what i wrote right exactly what the steps you were telling so this is m prime and which is compatible with you hence this lies in m by construction so m prime is subset of m so what about the other part m m is a subset of m prime how do you show it so since m prime and m are atlases and m prime is maximal so m m prime and m has to be equal right so m prime and m both are atlases and both are yeah no 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 there are something see the construction of m is important here so for example I mean, you might have seen in algebra, see something is there, right? And suppose you, you extend in this way, right? You, you extend this, like, like extend this way, and you extend it in this way as well, right? And both, both the cases, you might have the maximality. Yeah, so in this case, it cannot happen. That is the point. Can, can you repeat? So what I don't understand. Uh, this is this is our, uh, I mean atlas given atlas U, and this might happen that this you extend here in this side, right? So M prime goes this way. So this is M prime, and M is goes M, M is M is like this. So different set of things. Right? Sir. Sir, but M prime is subset of M, right? So to be maximal, you can take any yeah. element which is not an M. Right, right, M right. Prime right. And take oh, an M. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So you are using this part. Yeah. That's good. Yes. Yeah, Horsit, any comment? You're saying the same thing? Yes. Okay. So M prime is a subset of M and M both of them are maximal. So there has to be they have to be equal. So since 
M and M prime are both maximal at loss. So M prime has to be equal to N. All right. So for every atlas, you have a maximal atlas. All right. So, yeah. So now the definition. A maximal atlas. is called a differentiable structure. So sometimes we will call maximal atlas, sometimes we will call a differentiable structure, right? So and more definition. So we'll, in this course, you will see a lot more definitions. So a smooth manifold is a topological manifold or manifold of dimension n, right? Uh, that's fine. Manifold is a topological manifold. A smooth manifold is a topological manifold with a differentiable structure. Structure. All right. So you have a, a topological manifold and a differentiable structure. So that is that is a smooth manifold. Well, now it's time to give examples. But before that, remark. Pure remark, actually. In view of the proposition, Previous proposition to show something, uh, something means here differentiable uh, topological manifold, something is a smooth manifold. We need to show that it is that something is a topological manifold manifold with an atlas, right? So once you have an atlas you know that there is an underlined referential structure or the maximal atlas. So what you need is actually an atlas. So a, to a topological manifold, first you need to show that something, a topological space is a topological manifold and then you give an atlas. Once you have an atlas, you are fine. So you don't need to go with all the charts in a differentiable structure and show the compatibility. Just one atlas is enough. All right. Any question here? Any question till now? For example, S1 
with any of the what happens the previous atlases is a well 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 so s1 is a differentiable manifold so right that we have shown already right isn't it So we have shown this one has atlases. Now we have given examples of two atlases. This one. So, question: Are these two two compatible? So, this is those who are interested for you to think. So, this one we have given two atlases, right? So, are these two atlases compatible? So that you have unique maximal structure containing the first one as well as the second one. All right, next example. So uh, by S1 is a differentiable manifold, you mean smooth manifold? Oh, yeah, 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 differentiable manifold. So this, this notation, uh, yeah, this term, smooth manifold here. So this can be seen as differentiable manifold. Or C infinity manifold. So differentiable manifold, yeah. So when you put CK, it's a CK differentiable manifold. But in general, when we speak in this course about manifold, um, it will be, unless it is a specified, it will be a smooth manifold. Okay. So example two is Rn, right? Is a smooth manifold. So chart, so an atlas U is Rn comma identity, right? Pretty simple. So, and this is of course our model. We have Rn. We want to whatever we could do calculus in Rn. We want to do this for manifold also, right? That is the aim. So we need different notions. For example, from a manifold to a manifold map. When you, when can you say it is a smooth map? Yeah. So this would be our next question. But before that, we will have few examples. So example three, any open subset of Rn is a manifold. So manifold here, smooth manifold. Now, any any open subset of manifold Rn is also manifold that lead to something interesting as well. So example three, GLNR. So what is GLNR? Set of invertible real n by n matrix. Right. So this is 
collection of all invertible matrices n by n matrices with real entries so this glnr is a smooth manifold can you show how it is yeah it's already in that uh, in the board yeah so how do you show it that it was an open subset of r and square right 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 so you look at the map a goes to data right this is a continuous map right it goes from mnr set of all matrices which is identified to rn square right each of the matrix entries is a real number so it goes to rn square if you if you write in one single row so that is this identification right this is the identification is keep putting them all of the entries in a single row and you get an rn square now from here it is determinant so determinant is a continuous map right why is that so can you tell group why is determinant continuous map yeah i think he is not here so trishita can you tell why is determinant continuous map are you there yes sir yeah so why is determinant a continuous map Abhishek? Abhishek, are you there? Yes, sir. Yeah, why is determinant continuous? Sir? I mean, if you don't know, you say they don't know. I don't mind. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, Abhishek? Sir. Yeah, Dhruva. Yeah. Um, the kind of like we induce a topology on glnr to be like uh, if uh, we take a particular real number a and we take the inverse image to be the closed set then it would be continuous so is this that topology on glnr so glnr is an, is an open subset of rn square right uh, so in that case it would be an open sub variety of <laughs> i don't go in the terms what is a variety <laughs> uh, okay okay what is a, what is a variety you, you just need to say it is continuous right so it is a map from rnr rn square to where what is the image where does the image lie number real number right so it goes to real number yeah so this is, topology is very simple there nothing interesting about topology here it's the usual topology in r n square yeah aditya can you say sir uh, it's like a polynomial yeah it's a polynomial map hence it is continuous right so this is continuous because it's a it's a it is a polynomial in the entries as the yeah in the entries right 
So now, now you consider this map psi. So psi inverse r minus 0, right? This is GLNR. So this is an open subset of Rn square, so MNR, which is which is identified as Rn square, right? Because continuity open set goes to open set under pre inverse image. So hence GLNR is open. So by previous example, here we get this GLNR is a smooth manifold. All right. Yeah, any other question? Here, is it clear to everybody? Determinant was a polynomial. Right, now you can actually have any kind of open sets, nice open sets and have a manifold this way well we'll go uh, we'll we'll see more examples but uh, yeah it's already 7 30. sir even okay. in a function if we take yeah. the norm to be defined the metric to be defined with the norm of function yeah then also it should it will be a smooth manifold right? so what is the space here So space of linear functions from operators. Linear operators from where to where? Rn to Rn. Yeah, Rn to? Rn to Rn. Rn to Rn. True, yeah. You can identify there to in some, to some subset of Rn. Rn, Rn, some Rn, some big Rn. Right? Can you identify? So try identifying with that. So this class of, for example, let's take R, R M to be one. So collection of all linear functions from R into R. So what is this? Functional. Yeah, linear functionals. So what is it? What the is it to space. identified with? Dual space. So, so what is its dimension? Uh, Rn. So it is identified with Rn again, right? Yeah? Yes. Yes, so these things will be will play a very interesting role. You will see when we look at tangent space, we look at dual and dual do whatever things we have done in linear algebra, even we'll go multilinear algebra and do some operations. And this whole structure will move smoothly along, along the surface or along the manifold. And, and that is why this whole structure of linear algebra can be moved linearly. I'm sorry, not linearly, but in a small neighborhood, right? So that thing you will see. So here, yeah, if you look at collection of all linear maps from Rn to Rm and try to show it is, it is also a manifold because it can be identified with some matrices, right? M cross M by N matrices, or M by N or M by N? Yeah, so collection of some matrices. So that gives you uh, a manifold identification, right? So is this fine? Collection of all linear maps from Rn to Rm. So let's look at a linear map from Rn to Rm. So can you write it say, as a matrix? Yes, sir. Right, so what will be its order?
Am I in right? So M by N. So it will be collection of all M by N matrices, which is identified with R M N. That is also a manifold. Okay. So see you on uh, Friday again. Uh, I have a doubt. Yeah, sure. Sir, uh, we are taking uh, we, we we are taking a manifold to be an embedding in something like because uh, on the very first page there was a definition a manifold we there there is an open cover and that manifold is uh, strictly contained in that open cover. Ha! Huh, so open cover where where does this open subset comes from? So. We can take manifold to itself to where topological space and then do it. That's what we did, right? We look at open subset of uh, open subset of M only. We have not looked at open and uh, so the term embedding has not come yet. You might have heard somewhere else, right? So there is no nothing inside your uh, the topological space is in the examples you are looking at. These are all inside RN. Yes, yes. Mm. But if you look at the definitions, open subsets coming from M only. So they are subset of M. Okay. They are not bigger than M. So okay. I said contain in, but it is actually equal to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that's what I was pointing. It is, yeah, it is actually equal to M. Mm -hmm. The union. Mm -hmm. All right. Any other doubts? Any other doubt? Okay, then.